Now, Cursor is a new AI code editor, and you've probably heard about it, and it is really useful to help you at a point in your Flutterflow development where you need some custom code or some custom functionality, and it's either not possible to build in Flutterflow or it's too time-consuming. Now, today I will show you how I connect Cursor and Flutterflow through GitHub for a new project. And then I will show you a little bit about how to use Cursor for Flutterflow development and show you a couple of tips and tricks to get you started. Now, we will just start by creating a new Flutterflow project. Uh, just create a blank project, call it Cursor Setup cursor video and uh, create blank. I will not set up Firebase for now as it's not required. And the first thing we want to do is we want to connect uh, Flutterflow and GitHub. If you don't know what GitHub is, GitHub uh, is a place where you save your code and where you can pull copies of your code on which you work um, independently from your production code and it just makes development much easier. So why do we use GitHub? Well, you could just download the code and play with it, but um, because you will be using Cursor throughout your project, it's much easier to have a proper setup at the beginning, and then whenever you want to uh, fiddle around with Cursor to get some custom functionality, you can easily get down the most recent version of Flutterflow. Okay. Um, to set up GitHub, uh, what we want to do is we come here and um, we go down to GitHub and you want to, you know, get the URL of your repository. Um, in order to do so, we go to GitHub and, uh, you know, just go out to the base and uh, create a new repository. We will just call it Cursor Video and I'll quick, I'll you know, keep it really simple here. I will link in the video a, uh, a link to the documentary from Flutterflow that talks a bit more about how you can set this up, but this is a really simple process. So basically give it a name, make it private, and add readme file, because this will set up main as default branch. And now you create the repository. Okay, next step is we want to get the uh, Flutterflow app for uh, this repository um, and as I do this I just uh, will show you the documentation um, in here because it's also got the link you can read through all this is it really well made um, press Flutterflow GitHub and configure or install if you haven't done so and choose the repository you want it for uh, I want it for cursor video and I will save it and now everything is set up you go back to um, your Flutterflow repository, and all you need to do now is copy the URL, go back to Flutterflow, paste the URL, and associate the repository, sign in with GitHub, and there you go, that's it, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're associated, and now you want to push your first you know, your project to uh, GitHub and just call this first commit. And what this does is it doesn't push it to the main branch, it, push it pushes it to the uh, to a specific Flutterflow branch. That is why we created the uh, Flutterflow uh, app or added it to our repository. This will take a bit of time. Okay, once you've pushed it and you can verify this by going to your GitHub and uh, pressing refresh, you will see this new Flutterflow branch. And what we will do now is we will create a develop branch because Flutterflow will overwrite our code every single time we push from our repository. And uh, we just want to have a branch on which we can work. If you want to know more about this, read through the documentation. This is a simple best practice. Now press branches, say new branch, and you want to pull this from Flutterflow and call this develop. And you create a new branch. And here we go. Now everything is set up and we can get started with cursor. Okay, now open uh, cursor. 
And when you open Cursor, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a folder in which you want to keep the project. Um, I'm going to call it Cursor Video. Okay, and you open it, and now you're inside the folder. Now, this is Cursor. If you know Visual Studio Code, this will look really normal to you. Cursor is good uh, AI functionality, obviously, and the way you can access it is if you can, you know, use this and uh, toggle this AI pane, and you can talk to your code, um, and you can t use different uh, AI models, uh, and you can mention all sorts of stuff. Um, you can ch mention files, folders, the web, a lot. So um, this is for talking to your code. Um, there's also, if you press Command-I, you get the composer. This is probably the most powerful feature within um, Cursor, because this will actually write files, create files, create folders. Uh, this will you know, blow your mind if you play around with it. And uh, the difference between chat and composer is composer will actually, you know, do everything. And with chat, it will suggest things and then you can apply stuff. And lastly, the uh, terminal is also got uh, AI functionality. So we want to get our, uh, you know, repository onto this local machine. And the way we can do this is um, we will go to GitHub. And all we need is, uh, we need, uh, you know, we need to go into the branch and we need the URL you can find here. This is the GitHub URL it will use. And now let me just show you one cool trick uh, you can do. So if you press Command K, as it says down here, you can tell it what to do. Say, I've got a repo, repo at, you know, the link and I want to use it on this machine and initialize kit. Now, this automatically, you know, creates, clones the repository, it goes into the right directory and it initializes kit. So press command enter. And there you go. Even if you don't know terminal commands, you, this will get you started really easily. And as you can see, all we've got now is we've got readme, which is this is all we've got inside our uh, main branch, but we want to go to the develop branch. Now, again, you could uh, uh, use uh, just the terminal, or you could say, I want to check out the develop branch and it will simply give you what you need. Obviously, this is a very simple one, but uh, there you go. Now you can see we've actually got our develop branch and we've got all the files that we have in our Flutterflow project. Um, to demonstrate how easily you can use Cursor, I just want to do a little test. And what I want to do is um, say I want to create a calendar widget. And I want to have a live monthly view on which you can, you know, pick the single dates and uh, select date range. To do this, I will set up, or I would set up a grid and I need, you know, the day of every month. And um, to get those days, especially get those days um, that are in the week uh, of the first day of the month and the last uh, day of the month, uh, you would write a bit of code. Um, but I want to use cursor to give me that code. Um, now, where do we where do we put this code? Um, given that we don't really have any we don't have anything in here yet, no custom actions and no custom functions or widgets. Um, we want to know where Flutterflow puts them, and we can do so by simply creating them in Flutterflow and then pulling this code. So you go to Flutterflow. And to set this up, we just create some stuff. So let's say we create a function and we call it um, new custom function. And uh, we can only save this if we have something in this function. Otherwise, if you press save, it says it's empty. So we need this to save it in order to show us, show us where Flutterflow puts stuff in the code. So we can simply say return hello world and that's it press save function and there we go there's our function now you can also add a custom action yes you need to go into you can just create the boilerplate code and now you print, can press save and now you've got your custom action 
Okay, now how do we get this into Cursor? Um, that's very simple. As always, we say push to repository. We say new function and action. And we press push. And now it'll take a couple of seconds. Okay, now this is pushed to GitHub. And the process is always the same. You go to your Flutterflow branch. And you see this is the new commit, so it added something the custom function action in the library. And what you want to do now is you open a pull request and we pull and pull it from Flutterflow into the develop branch. So press create pull request. It'll check whether it can merge. It will be able to merge. So merge pull request and confirm the merge. And now if you go into your code and you go into the develop branch, you can see you've also got the new function and action in there. And uh, now all we need to do is we need to update it in in cursor. And uh, the way you can do this is um, you can simply say get the new version from GitHub and it'll tell you git pull origin develop and you can run this and it gets all the new files. And as you can see, we've now got a custom folder, a custom code folder for actions, and the custom functions are in Flutterflow. And there's our new custom function. Um, if it says packages are missing, well, obviously you want to get them. But uh, the next thing is what we want to do is we want to write the custom calendar widget code we need. Okay, so now we're going to do this live and I hope it works. Um, what we can do is we can simply select this and then we can say, uh, chat, let's, let's do the chat thing. And you can see it's, it's got the custom function start file and the lines. And I can say, um, to build a monthly calendar view, I need all the days of a month as a date time list. I also need those days of the previous month if they are in the same week as the first or the last of the month. Now, I specified uh, what I want to get out as a return, a date time list. Um, and I think this should do it. Let's just see what happens. And now this gives you all the code and explains you what's happening. Um, what you can do now is you can simply press apply. And um, let's make this a little smaller. And it, it puts this in there. Uh, and yes, we want to accept it. I just want to show you how you can test it in, in, in Flutterflow first. And um, what you can do is we want to, you want to take the name of the function. Okay, you want to copy and paste your function name. You want to go into your, into your function. Yes, let's discard this. Into your function over here and let's rename it. And uh, it's, and yeah, it gets a date time as input, a uh, date time list as return. And as input, it gets, let's call it month. Actually, let's check out what, what, what's given date time month. Yeah, it gets month, which is a date time and it returns a list of date time. Now, it's not nullable and it's a single, um, you know, date time we get in there. So you can compare this to this, this should be the same. So list date time, get month calendar dates, string month. And we've got a date time over here. So this is obviously a date time and not a string. And there we go, that's set up. And now what you want to do is you can simply, you know, pull the code you've got here and you can remove this. Um, let's press save. And what we can do now is we can test the function.
And let's just see what happens if it's done correctly. So we put in a date time and we get back a, uh, yeah, a range of dates. And what we want to see is, oh yeah, over here we can see 5th of October. What we want to see it is if it matches our calendar. Sunday, the 1st of September is the first day of, uh, of the month. And this would be a Sunday. So this is the first day if you are American. If you are European, obviously that's a problem because we normally start days with Monday. Um, but you could change this in cursor. So this is just to show it. But it's given me the whole uh, date list time I need. And the last day is also a Saturday, which is the fifth. So I've now got all the days I need to set up a grid for a custom date range picker. If you want to see how you can build this in Flutterflow later on, I'm more than happy to make a video about this. So just comment below. Okay, so as we can see, our function codes worked. So in no time at all, we got a functioning uh, function <laughs> out of Cursor. I want to give you a couple of things you that, that will help you inside of Cursor. And um, you can give Cursor certain rules. So, um, and you can use Cursor to actually get better at code and understand what you're doing. Um, so if you open your settings, you can put those in. And I already put them in, um, which is why I got a lot of output. You could say, I am a beginner developer. I want you to be my coding mentor and explain to me the concepts and how they are important. The goal is to maximize the speed at which I become a better developer. Um, this is this works globally and you can change this and say whatever you want. I've also got a Twitter post in which I've uh, which I'll link down below in which I've got some other stuff you can put in here. But you can also um, get uh, more rules uh, by actually even asking a cursor itself. Um, you could say, uh, you know, let's create a new file and say, I am developing a Flutterflow app and I need, and I am a beginner at coding, but want to use you, i.e. cursor. What would be applicable rules. And now you can see it gives you some stuff uh, when you interact with an explain flutter dot concept, provide code examples. You know, you can use this AI to just get started and give rules to you. And lastly, the uh, thing that is happening currently is that Flutterflow updated uh, to version 5.0. And it will soon feature a push and pull synchronization. So you don't need to go through the copy and pasting process anymore. But until that is available, um, I thought I'd put the video up anyways, and I will create another video as soon as that features out, showing you how you can be even faster at building with Cursor and Flutterflow. I hope you liked the video. Uh, leave comments below. Let me know how you use Cursor, if you use Cursor, or if you've got any other approach to the whole matter. Um, yeah, see you in the next video.